Hello, and welcome to NARC, Narcissistic Abuse Recovery Collaborators, home to NARC Troopers. If you like today's episode, check out my website at narctroopers.com, where you'll find podcasts and articles and YouTube videos and just a whole library of resources to help you with recovery from narcissistic abuse. Today, the topic is splitting, self-states, switching, and other sad you-know-what about narcissists. What makes these neurodivergent, maladapted narcopaths like like an alien species? Because that's kind of what it's like. The narcissist has many internal objects, many of which are bad objects, but this person has no true self. These inner objects are chaotic and disorganized because the ego is fragmented, which is known as an identity disturbance. Carl Jung coined the term uh, constellated self, and that is exactly uh, the condition of the narcissist inner core. They do not have a constellated self. They are fragmented and this gives them an identity disturbance. Recent research conceptualizes narcissism as a self-regulatory system in which narcissism is a like a set of mutually uh, reinforcing characteristics, abilities, and strategies. For example, approach, orientation, desire for self-esteem, and things like that. that these things orient the individual towards positive self-views and greater self-enhancement. Campbell and Foster talked a lot about this. You might want to check that out. They published something in 2007 on this subject. Um, There exists a false narrative in a narcissist driven by magical thinking um, and delusional features that crosses over into full-blown dissociative disorder sometimes and also delusions, um, all kinds of delusions. And this false narrative, the story that they create for themselves, um, must reinforce the false persona that the narcissist has constructed to replace his or her true authentic self that has been disabled and deconstruct it. So it has to match, and they create uh, a story that's going to match this false persona, this facade. But what are some of the features of pathological malignant narcissism that make it such a serious mental health disorder that can never really be repaired? And don't let people tell you that it can be, because it can't. There are several characteristics that will show how dysfunctional and impaired the person with NPD actually is. For example, splitting. The narcissist views the world through a limited lens where everything is categorized as good or bad. It is the primitive defense mechanism that operates that... um, resolves the civil war that is always pulling and tearing at the soul of these cluster B people. It's like a very maladapted uh, coping mechanism. The first splitting happened when the narcissist made himself, when he, you know, he made himself all bad and the external object, which is usually the mother, all good. And um, he, with the splitting, came amnesia. Here, the narcissist becomes all good and the environment around them all bad. And, you know, both of these options create dissociation. Dissociative disorder sometimes is a companion to narcissism. Okay, so the inner voice, um, these inner voices, multiple, uh, comprise our identity, our ego. They're different self-states is what they're called, self-states. And they are chaotic voices uh, made up 
of these um, various types. And so here we go. Number one, the persecutor. Two, the sage. Three, the infant. Four, the mother. Six, gender. Um, five, gender. And six is life, sex, and libido. Seven, death or thanatos. And, um, you know, there's some subgenres, but let's just stick with these these seven. That's enough, I think. Uh, Jung called them archetypes. Uh, mental health worker, workers call them introjects. And they are all parts of the inner landscape of a person. The narcissist cannot ever deal with his harsh inner critic that is relentless and soul crushing. These inner voices torment him or her and can drive them to psychosis, which is a totally disconnect from reality, when, um, when these voices become overwhelming. So what is the solution? When it becomes unbearable, they offload these inner voices that are the threatening and all of that. Um, and the narcissist projects these upon those around him or her, and subsequently they they make themselves into the victim, which is all just a complete fabricated confabulation of fake news <laughs> that they create for themselves. <clears throat> splitting, we're still talking about splitting, it leads to um, a disconnect, dissociation, depersonalization and derealization. Each one of these are a little bit different because they're talking about that disconnect from yourself, the disconnect from others, the disconnect from reality. You know, it's multifaceted. The outcome of all of this is that they are either, they render everything good or bad, which is a psychotic solution because we all know nothing is 100% absolutely good or bad. It's most people, most things and situations are a mixed bag. It's, um, <clears throat> it's more complicated. There's layers, there's gray tones. All right. So let's switch and talk about, uh, self states. Now the self should be constellated as per Jung's, uh, Jung studies and integrated, uh, through successful object relations. That's how you get a constellated and integrated um, identity. <clears throat> but when the object relations are developmentally interrupted and replaced with painful experiences, the, the, the self stays fragmented into what is called self states. There can be numerous self states <clears throat> within a person. Each of these states corresponds to uh, an unmet need, and each state has its own set of coping strategies, understandings, and emotions, which all revolve around getting these unresolved needs met. This all begins at a very, very early age before we really have any memory too much about what was going on. <clears throat> the first external object a child identifies with is the mother or primary caregiver. And what happens when the young child's needs are not met? Well, these self states break off and become unmet needs. These needs are a primordial condition. I love that. It's a primordial condition uh, where the baby and his or her um, <clears throat> needs, let's call them their their needs for survival. Um, they 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 don't go well. So you know they um, <clears throat> let's see how can I explain this? Um, some of these needs are um, they're unmet. They're um, fractured, and as a result they don't develop as they should. Uh, all of this is what makes up ego formation 
in a human being. It's their identity. And in order to develop a healthy ego, the child must develop healthy relations with these primary external objects, which are their parents, family members, siblings, and their relation to the world around them. If in if the mother or caregiver or any of the these people uh, are good and healthy, then then the needs are satisfied <coughs> and resolved satisfactorily. The fragments disappear because the needs are satisfied. And the more that they merge, the more the self emerges as healthy and whole. So that's sort of the process. I hope that makes sense to you. Um, so let's go on. If relationships are flawed uh, for some reason and early childhood relations fail, the ego cannot become unified, ordered, or constellated, and it is sort of incomplete, broken up in pieces, trying to put itself back together. The disordered narcissist and other cluster Bs, like borderline, um, psychopaths, and stuff like that, they have to create an alternate version of themselves that is impervious to pain. Grandiose manifestations include senses of entitlement, fantasies of unlimited power, uh, and exploitative attitude, whereas the feeling of emptiness, envy, uh, hypersensitivity, and an avoidant interpersonal style typically describe vulnerable manifestations. And this was published by Pincus in 2009, if you want to check him out, P-I-N-C-U-S. <clears throat> uh, NPD involves a pattern of self-centered, arrogant thinking and behavior, uh, a lack of empathy and a con consideration for other people. They just don't have that. They don't think about that. And it also, they have an excessive need for admiration and attention. Uh, this is rooted in the deprived states that are missing healthy development. They never went through it. They didn't experience it and get that blocked down. And so uh, it comes from this fractured, broken place uh, of the inner core, which is problematic. The disordered narcissist um, is these self-states or pieces of the self that are responsive to needs which are perceived as internal objects. The unhealthy interaction happens when, um, when the fragmented self-state self -state, gets activated. And this unstable, um, primitive um, part, piece of the self, is thrown off balance. And subsequently, the self-state uh, that can take care of the needs and stuff steps in and takes care of the problem because all of the self-states are not created equal. The uh, interjects voices. The scripting inside the narcissist's head is often a tormentor that requires silencing in order to reconcile everything and achieve some sense of order and relief. Um, <clears throat> that's a tough one to do because, um, you know, they... It takes a long time for this process to happen. Um, you know, the narcissist has not experienced the requisite healthy interactions that build a strong core. And as a result, they learn to soothe themselves by internalizing the world around them so that they can have control. It is maladaptive and pathological solution to address this missing piece or pieces that create this emptiness and this, this hollowness that they feel. It demands a remedy. So what the narcissist does to survive and remain sane and to feel complete and all of that, um, to find coping mechanisms, 
that placates them and makes life unbearable, what they're experiencing. Okay, we're going to switch now and talk about <laughs> how appropriate, how apropos. We're going to talk about switching. We're going to switch and talk about switching. So switching is a common phenomenon in narcissism. It's also present in borderline antisocial and other disorders. And it can be gradual or it can be sudden. The switching can be gradual or sudden. It is an unbelievable thing to witness. How can someone shape shift in front of your eyes? <laughs> they do. And completely transform themselves into something unrecognizable uh, in just mere minutes or maybe even seconds. It's just like, boom, I'm somebody else now. <laughs> it's just wild. Okay. Um, it is absolutely mind blowing. Um, and if you've never really seen it happen to someone, you're just not going to even believe it's possible because that just sounds crazy. You can't just suddenly be a whole other person, but the person with NPD switches to a borderline state and the person with BPD may switch to a secondary psychopath self state. And this progressing or um, changing or becoming something so different and so entirely um, complete is kind of like um, what switching is all about. <clears throat> People with these disorders have dichotomous thinking, which means that they are prone to splitting people into all good or all bad with no gray areas in between. I think you know probably by now, if you've been in this for a little bit, that the narcissist is that way. They don't see the different shades and gradations. See just two things, good or bad. You're either this or you're that. It's pretty simplistic. Um, and oh, with what speed and alacrity we can switch from one to the other. You can go from good to bad in like five seconds, three seconds. It's insane. Um, or vice versa, you know, and it just happens almost immediately. Um, their identity also changes uh, in a heartbeat when all you have is a howling wilderness in your internal landscape. Of course, it can change. There's nobody there. You don't have anything to drag along and have to work with. It's just like an etch a sketch. You just shake it, everything's gone. And it's time to just start over with a whole new thing. And you start doing the little knobs and doing all the stuff, right? Because it's that instantaneously. It happens just so fast. It makes your head spin. Um, <clears throat> and there's no reason. Just let me indicate that. It's not as if it's your fault. Like, you didn't do this. You know, you're just an appliance. You're just like a cell phone or a toaster or a microwave or something like that. Um, you know, you serve a purpose when you're new, you're shiny and sparkly and fun to play with. You serve, you know, you, you do something, you have a function, you have utility, but you do get older and your knobs might fall off. <laughs> yeah. Your knobs could fall off or, you know, if you're an appliance and you get older, you're just going to be kind of, um, uh, like glitchy, right? Things might not be working perfectly like they they did when you were brand new. And so the narcissist knows this uh, and, and they see that in you. They look at you and they're like, mm, they're not providing the same quality of fuel and supply that they once did. Oh, how disappointing how they have failed me. When it's really them and their narcissism that is like, pulling things in a certain direction to try to get a certain result that they're never going to be able to get. <clears throat> so their identity changes in a heartbeat when all you, you know, when you don't have anything to hold you down and root you, um, you know, in one place. Switching is a back and forth switching from one self state to another. And, you know, you can only do this if you have an unstable, chaotic inner core, which all cluster bees have. Um, 
And let me just clear up one thing. Narcissist, their emptiness is an absence that stays with them for life. People that have borderline, perhaps histrionic, uh, and maybe even, uh, I don't know, so I'm not going to say it. That would be conjecture. But I know for a fact, research-based, that uh, borderlines, people with BPD, they're not doomed. You know, they can receive treatment. They usually get better when they get older. <laughs> In my case, I'm not sure that has been uh, how that's played out. But for most people, um, that's how that works. And you know, you get, um, uh, you can get treatment and do different things like um, dialectical behavioral therapy is something that works really well with borderlines. And you learn to manage and regulate your emotions and self-validate self and all those kind of things. There's just so much to learn. It may take a, a little while, you know, a few years or for longer, but eventually you can get there and be free from the disorder and you're capable of love and you feel remorse and compassion and you have morals and like all those things that the narcissist never has had, never will have, and doesn't even know what it is. You have that if you are not a narcissist. They're, narcissists and psychopaths are the only ones who are just, that's, that's it, game over. They're gone. And what has replaced them is, um, <clears throat> very very bad <laughs> you know not something you want to mess with um okay so what do i want to tell you now looking at my notes um since we went to a new platform it makes me record these darn videos i have trouble finding how to just make it an audio and having the cute little music at the end and at the beginning so i'm gonna try to work on doing better for y'all and getting the music back and making my face go away so you don't have to be watching me through these talks you can just be listening to me you know what you can do you can put this on listen in your car on your earbuds when you're doing commutes you know when you're housework cooking whatever and don't just don't even pay attention to the video you don't need to see me so um long day teaching school today i'm sure i look pretty chewed up and spit out like what did the cat drag in or dog so let me just finish this. They are programmed to expect hurt and pain and disappointment with anything good because of their own personal experience as a child growing up. It taught them that love hurts, trusted ones betray, loved ones abandon, and family tortures you. That's that's what they learned. Yeah, pretty much. And um, <clears throat> you don't want to have to do deal with that. Switching is a, rela is a reaction to perceived and imaginative threats. That doesn't even have to be real. Um, it is triggered by events that are external in their environment. Switching is preceded by emotional dysregulation so that an, um, so an informed person could easily recognize it. It could be almost... Um, any random thing that overwhelms defenses, grand forces that come to the to the front, and um, they just you have to it comes up, you have to face them and um, face with with reality. That's part of the cure. Stay in reality, come back to reality, be grounded in reality. That's important. Um, and that that is something that they simply cannot do. They can't do it but most of you can. Switching is preceded by a prodromal stage. Boy, that's tough. Prodromal, where you can anticipate what is about to happen. You know, people that have, <laughs> to give you a nasty example, people who have herpes will get like a little tingling prodromal uh thing that happens to them that lets them know before they actually break out with their um, <clears throat> whatever that is, blisters and, and stuff. They'll have the little tingling prodromal warning first. <clears throat> I'll give you a second example, less gross. Um, migraine headaches. The prodromal stage is the part where you see flashing lights in your peripheral vision. You get nauseous. 
feel like you've got the spins. You don't know what that is? You don't want to know what that is. It's a horrible feeling. Um, but you have these symptoms first, and then bam, the migraine headache comes. But there's always a warning. There's this prodromal phase is a warning, and switching is preceded by a prodromal stage where you can anticipate what's about to happen. It's, the, it's like a series of things that are signs. Some of these may include uh, a kind of sensory instability, somatic reaction that's in the body, catatonic defense. Um, catatonia is a defense mechanism. That's when you just freeze. It's like the whole fight, flight, freeze uh, response. You get stuck in freeze <laughs> like and freeze and freeze and you're just kind of like um not present you're frozen you freeze and you don't move and you can't move sometimes it's almost like being paralyzed so that is um that can be a prodromal uh feature in um <clears throat> in switching before it happens is that you have um you know something like that happen to you catatonia that's wild huh um or other visible freeze reaction. So um, there can also be a calm before the storm. Behavior changes um, to reflect kindness, passivity, agreeableness, and a mellow kind of chill. Knowing that they are not uh, typically put together this way can make it very disconcerting, disturbing, and terrible, right? <clears throat> um, another sign is a shift in their physical self by somatizing that as in somatic like of the body somatizing and using their body to ready themselves for what is to come and additionally there is a change in identity that's the that's the big um that's the big thing there's a change in um their identity their beliefs, their behaviors, habits, patterns, personality, all of it is going to change so significantly, you know, that it's almost like they're a different person, you know, they walk differently, they speak differently, they dress differently. I mean, it's the full thing, right? <laughs> they're, they're eating prime rib one night, and after this happens to them, after the switching, suddenly they're vegan, and it happened like in 12 hours in six hours, maybe in one hour. Yeah, no explanation. Like, how, how did you go from doing that to doing this? Like, I don't know. I don't know what you're talking about. That would be what they would say, because they don't know. They are probably not aware uh, that that's happening. <clears throat> so as the new self, um, is identity is born, and the self-state is, um, is new and coming to life, it, and gets closer, they will test it by misbehaving and acting out and acting reckless and impulsive. And finally, dissociation is the last stage um, that can last any period, really. It could last for years. I know people that have been married to narcissists for 30 years and they didn't know. They didn't know. They were in the shared fantasy. They were in some delusional mutual psychosis and they had no idea what was happening and then looking behind them at everything after they're out of it man that's a different story you see all kinds of things you didn't notice when you were in the forest and you couldn't see the trees for the forest um it is a drastic and rapid transformation the shifting and through all of this they are dismissive and in denial that in that it's even happening it is unbelievable to uh, witness these abrupt, abrupt shifts. It's hard to say these abrupt shifts and pivots because you know they are dramatic changes that come um, come with no unre like no recognizable uh, warnings of any kind. <clears throat> Sometimes they don't have those. They don't always have this prodromal phase. Sometimes they do, but sometimes they don't. They're just so unpredictable. You don't know what you're getting. Switching is also hard to diagnose in clinical terms 
because they are just all over the place. Um, Dr. Vaknin, of course, Dr. Vaknin, the indisputable authority on all topics about NPD, he identifies three types of switching, the consensual, the forced, and the triggered. Consensual um, and triggered are the most common kinds. There, there's just, oh man, it's a lot. Um, you know, when the disordered know in advance that they're going to switch because of some external factor that it is that that is consensual forced switching happens uh, when several self states are at war with one another as they battle for dominance uh, triggered switching occurs when either the internal or the external cues are triggered so what's some of the other sad shit that has to do with all of this? Uh, I can personally give my own testimony that I have witnessed both the splitting and the shifting. Yeah, I've seen it. Um, I was married 16 years to one of these folks and I saw it. Uh, I didn't know what to call it at the time, but I know what I saw and what... Um, how just unbelievable that it was. Um, I, I was taught that with acute clarity by participating in that relationship. Wow. <clears throat> My, uh, and, and through this marriage, I wish that I had internalized the, um, like, you know, all of this stuff that we're talking ab about before uh, my life like so many years were wasted. I can't get them back. They were just wasted. In conclusion, part of me feels profound pity and compassion for what happened to him and what he became as a result of his early years of horror. And part of me wants justice, uh, remuneration. It's a hard word, remuneration. And I want karma to force him to suddenly snap out of it and actually feel the pain that he has caused not just me but all the other females that have been in his life and to have them feel it you know um i that would be a super thing um he has caused and like and feels remorse and honor our time together it's a mixed bag so you you know you got good and bad when you're um uh doing all of this right the you're doing the work you're peeling back the onion we're you're talking about it and you're acknowledging what really happened i witnessed all of the signs his silence the contemptuous stares the changes in his body and behavior i saw the man i thought i knew who partnered with me to embark on a common vision and act as a mutual architect of our beautiful life together. I watched it disintegrate in the time that passed after he left. It's just like it evaporated and um, it, um, it, it went away. Um, <clears throat> so what do I want to tell you? Um, uh, you know, you watch this life that you had disintegrate in front of your eyes. Yeah, it's just poof. It's not that the narcissist changes. They cost you. The price you pay to have time with them is too enormous for you to ever pay. Uh, if you have a house, you're probably going to lose it if you're tied up, tied up with a narcissist. You have to be trickier, sneakier, craftier than they are. We can talk about that another day. Um, but, you know, um, I, he was confusing person. Um, and, you know, I think that we, it's easy to become blindly loyal to, to these people because of our own disorder. And, um, and we try to vilify them and blame them for things they, you know, really just don't even know what it is. And their brain doesn't work like ours do. And they're just a whole new beast. Um, so, um, how should we end this? I feel like I've been talking a while. Um, and I'm so tired. Um, 
Understanding all of this does little to heal the wounds that that they that he sort of hacked into my body with a machete. Knowing that uh, he is a mentally ill person, um, you know, and and he's damaged so much that you know you can never ex- like experience real love from someone like that. I mean, I was silly to even try, and I have to acknowledge that and accept it, and just tell myself, you know, this is the way it is. Um, we all become collateral damage, and you know. Then there's the guilt that comes with it. I didn't mention that. Guilt is a doozy. Um, Think about that. You know, when you wake up from the spell and rejoin reality, uh, you you do have to look and acknowledge that also that you have lost time. You've lost relationship. You've lost opportunities. You've lost your own personal dignity. Yes. You've lost the truth, which is all we have. That's so important. And it's just so much loss. You know, the grief over over everything that you did lose in that is overwhelming and can cause a lasting ability uh, to believe that you're going to meet somebody just that's going to manifest and have a million dollars and take care of you happily ever after. And he's going to look like, who's he going to look like? He's going to look like Ryan Gosling and Keanu Reeves mixed together. Yeah, I could have some of that. Um, so, uh, yeah, you're unable to do anything. You become addicted and trauma bonded and brainwashed and entrained. That's the word that you should look up in relation to what we're talking about, how they entrain our brain. That's a good one. Entraining, they entrain the brain. So, you know, we lost our minds. And then we lost our lives and we never even knew what hit us. Those of us who got involved in this way, um, understanding the strange inner workings that, that drive these predator people, disordered people, um, to, to do what they do. Well, you know, we just have to turn inward and not worry about them. Work on ourselves. That's the best you can hope to do. And finally, you know, you can try to help others because I have found that there's great comfort in that. And, you know, others may abandon you, but you must not abandon yourself. You know, you have to forgive and accept and move on. Life is so very important. And um, I just think that. Um, What is this? I think that that's the answer. (laughs) Okay. So that's it for tonight, guys. Thank you for listening. And I hope that you'll join me again soon. Okay. Bye. Oh my gosh.